In 2022, the amount of money Americans saved dropped a lot, similar to what happened during the Great Recession. People think this happened because when the pandemic started, everyone had to save money due to lockdowns. Now they're spending that money because things are getting better, but also because prices are going up and the economy is changing. Economists see this as somewhat good because it means people are using their savings. But for individuals, it's not so nice, and it stresses many people out. Almost 70% of people feel stressed out about money, even 57% of those who make over $100,000. People who make a lot of money are also stressed because prices are rising. The economy isn't stable, and the interest rates on loans are changing. It's hard to save money when the things you need to live cost a lot. Still, people in the U.S. have more savings now than before. Bank records show that overall, the country is in a better money situation. But it's different depending on how much money people make. But during the end of 2022, the total savings for everyone went down. This makes us wonder why this happened and how it will affect the economy. Why did people stop saving? And what will this mean for the economy? Americans have managed to accumulate trillions more in savings collectively than they had before the pandemic hit. While many people have improved their financial situations compared to the pre-pandemic era, these accumulated savings are now beginning to dwindle after a period of growth. The personal saving rate, which measures the portion of income people hold on to after taxes and regular expenses, is also declining. This is particularly true for underserved communities where a substantial part of income is used for essential needs like housing, food, health care, and transportation. As of 2023, the personal saving rate is around 4.5%, noticeably lower than its historical average of nearly 9%. This decline becomes more pronounced during periods when stimulus checks were distributed and spending remains constrained. Furthermore, the reduced expenditure on regular outlays during the pandemic contributed to an increase in savings. The ongoing challenge of inflation has also played a role in pushing down the monthly savings rate. It's important to note that this customer rate also considers earnings and savings within a month. However, if we examine the total funds in customers and banks' accounts, it's evident that the overall account balance surpassed levels before the pandemic. During the initial phase of the pandemic, households in the United States saved significantly more than anticipated, amassing an additional $2 to $2.5 trillion. This surplus can be attributed to changes in spending behaviors and the economic uncertainties prevailing at the time. Over the preceding 9 to 12 months, the accumulated savings had gradually diminished. The estimated amount likely falls to $1 to $1.5 trillion. Throughout the country, individuals have been gathering a reserve of funds, contributing significantly to the economy's stability. This effect is particularly pronounced in the United States, where economic growth heavily relies on consumer spending. The upper 50% of earners possess a surplus of savings exceeding $1 trillion, a sum nearly three times larger than that held by the lower 50%, as indicated by government economists. However, it's worth noting that the latter group still collectively retains hundreds of billions of dollars in excess savings. On average, this equates to approximately $5,500 per household. It's important to understand that this doesn't necessarily translate to readily available cash, as these funds might have to be used to pay off student loans, mortgages, cars, or directed towards retirement funds. Approximately 37% of Americans have refrained from utilizing their savings accumulated during the pandemic. While 45% have left their savings untouched or withdrawn a portion, the majority of these savings remain intact. Comparatively, only 17% of Americans have depleted mainly their pandemic savings. Nevertheless, this financial cushion is slowly contracting due to inflation. Across various categories like food, fuel, and rent, the rising costs erode individuals' disposable income and impact their savings. This phenomenon is especially concerning given that before the pandemic, the average black family had a mere five days' worth of liquid savings. Consequently, the financial system lacks the flexibility to endure periods of income loss. 
the U.S. is in better shape now than it was six months ago. Which of those camps would you put yourself in? Well, I, I, I know what a lot of different businesses are doing, and I just got a report from one of them that happens to be in the retail-related business. And in any event, you know, it was minus 22% in February from a year ago. In they sales? didn't think that was going to happen. Sales? You mean in sales. Profit. Yeah. In sales. Profits are down a lot more than that. On the other hand, some of our businesses are still doing fine, but they all are reporting that. Economists agree that injecting additional savings into the financial system has been crucial for sustaining consumer spending and averting recession. This consensus, however, coexists with a sad reality. A considerable part of the population lives on the brink of financial instability, relying on their salaries to cover immediate expenses, as shown by recent comprehensive surveys. Our analysis of a diverse group of 1,000 individuals across the nation offers valuable insights into the prevailing sentiment. An astonishing 69% of participants express pessimism about the current economic situation, and this negatively extends to their outlook on the future this unprecedented peak of gloominess. Remarkably, amid these circumstances, consumer behavior remains relatively resilient. Yet a problematic issue emerges, the prevailing global discourse predicting an impending recession. This constantly anticipated downturn has been on the horizon for a while, initially projected for the previous year, then the first quarter of the present year, and now earmarked for the latter half of this year. In these scenarios, the concept of self-fulfilling prophecies looms large. As public worry over a potential recession grows, consumer spending might decrease, inadvertently contributing to the feared economic decline. Federal economists stress the current role of consistently low interest rates in safeguarding the financial stability of numerous Americans. As these rates approach zero, the cost of borrowing diminishes, making it easier to access credit and encourage loans. This phenomenon is mirrored in another illustrative chart showing a decline in personal interest payments, deviating from the traditional long-term growth trend. This situation is driven by a context of growing savings, which enhances the overall economic health. Nevertheless, experts predict that these amassed reserves could deplete rapidly, reflecting similar trends observed globally in developed countries where household savings are steadily declining. Concurrently, disruptions within the regional banking sector introduce an additional variable that might influence the trajectory of interest rates. With the Federal Reserve already working to moderate economic growth, the natural reduction in lending by regional banks could inadvertently aid in achieving this goal. Consequently, this circumstance might signal an approaching end to the era of interest rate hikes. The impact of Federal Reserve decisions on personal finances is undeniably profound. Fluctuations in interest rates determine the profitability of savings. Higher rates lead to increased returns on saved funds, whereas lower rates can significantly change the incentives provided by savings or checking accounts. Currently, the Federal Reserve maintains interest rates of around 5%. However, achieving a 5% savings rate in typical financial accounts remains a considerable challenge for most individuals. Amidst the turbulent economic landscape, rife with job losses and uncertainties, pursuing substantial savings might not be feasible for everyone. Yet, experts stress the importance of embarking on the savings journey, even if it falls short of the ideal 15%. Charlie, can you the frugality basically has helped Berkshire. And I look out at this audience and I see a bunch of understated frugal people do. We collect you people. <laughs> but forget about it this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> the more you buy, the more you save at these prices, folks. <laughs> Numerous approaches are available for saving money, each yielding distinct interest returns for savers. One convenient method involves directing a portion of your income into a retirement plan before it reaches you. This strategy, which may incorporate tax deductions, deferrals, or even tax-free advantages for Roth plans, ensures that savings are given priority. On the contrary, 
Keeping cash under your mattress proves unwise due to its negative returns, especially during inflation. As prices rise, the actual value of stored money erodes, impacting many traditional checking accounts. Well-known banks like Wells Fargo, TD Chase, and Bank of America typically offer minimal returns. Conversely, high-yield savings accounts offer the potential for significantly increased interest rates. While the national average remains disappointingly low, opting for high-yield choices is a prudent move. This advice stands true for both short-term and long-term savings. Although I don't recommend leaving funds in a regular savings account, placing money into a high-yield savings account for 6 to 24 months can prove advantageous. As of 2023, the national savings interest rate remains below 1%. However, specific high-yield accounts showcase returns of approximately 4%, a noteworthy improvement from the past, although still lagging behind inflation. Surprisingly, it's feasible to attain interest rates exceeding 4% without subjecting your funds to excessive risks. This transition can be truly transformative. In times, approximately 6 million individuals in the United States have been classified as unbanked, indicating their non-utilization of checking or savings accounts. This trend sparks concerns about financial inclusivity and the obstacles faced by those unwilling or unable to access conventional banking services. This scenario can be attributed to a range of factors, with two significant causes being insufficient funds and a general mistrust of financial institutions. What's imperative now is to redefine the criteria dictating banking service accessibility, ensuring a streamlined process for those with limited income and net worth. Within this demographic, many experience their money lying dormant in checking and savings accounts. This immobile state of funds often arises due to apprehensions about complex financial instruments or a lack of awareness about available alternatives. A ripe opportunity exists for families to optimize their financial strategies and maximize their resources. Through avenues like high-yield savings accounts, individuals can achieve not only superior returns compared to traditional savings accounts, but also benefit from higher interest rates. However, it is important to note that these elevated rates might necessitate maintaining a specific minimum balance. This consumer behavior has ignited fierce competition among banks to attract customers. This trend, coupled with favorable economic conditions, makes reasonable lending rates more feasible for financial institutions. This trend extends beyond traditional banks, with entities like Goldman Sachs and tech giants like Apple entering the financial services arena to offer attractive returns. Apart from high-yield savings accounts, products such as certificates of deposits, or CDs, offer an avenue to make one's money work in their favor. The appeal of CDs lies in their relatively higher interest rates, often surpassing those of standard savings accounts. However, this advantage entails committing to a fixed term while funds remain locked in the CD. While this might seem restrictive, households with steady cash flows and the ability to invest over a predefined period can benefit significantly from CDs. Regardless of the chosen avenue, the key takeaway is the importance of nurturing a savings habit. Even starting with a modest amount can lead to compounding benefits over time, thanks to the power of compound interest. It's crucial to acknowledge that circumstances change, and while ambitious goals are appealing, embracing a practical and gradual approach holds its merit. Saving any sum, no matter how small, establishes the groundwork for a promising financial future. Even in a markedly altered current environment, saving, even in small increments, remains a commendable step towards ensuring one's economic well-being. Find clarity in these eight simple rules that might come for you and prove their worth. These rules are like a guiding star, helping you stay steady even in turmoil. The first rule is about being careful. It tells you always to have some extra money, enough to cover three to six months of expenses. This way, if something unexpected happens, like losing your job or facing financial setback, you won't have to sell your investments quickly. Your emergency funds acts like a guard, protecting your financial well-being. 
The second rule is like a shield against uncertainty. It's called diversification. This means spreading your money across different types of businesses and industries. By doing this, you create a safety net. If one area struggles, others might do well, balancing things out and giving you some relief. The third rule is all about sticking to the plan. It's like a steady beat in the background of a song. Instead of trying to time the market, you invest regularly over time. This strategy has been proven to work better than trying to predict the perfect moment to invest. Even if you miss the best days, by keeping your strategy consistent, you can still do well in the long run. The fourth rule advises you not to let fear control your decisions. It's natural to feel scared when things aren't going well, but acting out of panic can hurt your finances. Just as you resist the urge to sell everything when things are bad, you should also avoid making impulsive purchases when the situation improves. Trust your plan and stick with it. That's the key. The fifth rule is like the conductor of your financial orchestra. It reminds you to have a stable source of income. With a steady income, you can take advantage of opportunities when the market is down without having to sell things hastily to cover your bills. The sixth rule asks you to consider whether you're cautious or overly worried. It's okay to keep a bit more money in cash if it helps you sleep better at night. Sometimes, even when the numbers suggest otherwise, having some extra money saved up can be reassuring. And the value of American business depends on how much it delivers in cash to its owners over between now and Judgment Day, and, and I don't think it changes in 10% in, in a two-month period if you're, if you're looking at at it as a business now you've got anything can happen in markets i mean anything can happen in markets and that's why they don't ever borrow money against securities that uh, markets don't have to open tomorrow i mean they, they, you can have extraordinary events so the seventh rule focuses on the dangers of borrowing money to invest while it might seem like a good idea history shows that this can be risky especially when the market is unpredictable being cautious and not taking on unnecessary risks can save you a lot of trouble. When you get into economics, uh, there's so many variables. And, and the truth is, you've got to expect good times and bad times in business. And if you, if you were to buy an auto dealership or a McDonald's franchise or anything like that, you wouldn't try and time the purchase. You'd try and make the right purchase at the right price, and you want to be sure you got a good business. Lastly, the eighth rule reminds you that time is an important factor. If you'll need your money within the next few years, investing might not be the best choice. Markets can go up and down for years before recovering, so it's necessary to match your investment timeline with your goals. These eight simple rules will become your haven. They have been tested and will help you navigate challenges. As you continue your financial journey, remember these rules. They will keep you steady, give you courage, and ensure that even in uncertain times, you stay grounded.